Oh my God, I'm live. Hi, nobody. So this is how I start my lessons. Hi, nobody. Because I'm so enthusiastic to start that I'm just, I'm just starting whether or not people are, are joining me. And I know Instagram is telling followers that I'm online now. And um, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, everybody. Lockdown lesson numero cinco. Um, how's everybody doing? Um, the ancient Chinese expression, may you live in interesting times, is in full effect here. How are you guys doing? Who has good news? Um, if you have good news, I always want to start with a round of good news. We need it. I can share some good news. Oh, Isabel, listening to your soothing voice. Well, actually, I've been coaching a lot online today and <clears throat> speaking a lot. So my voice is a little bit sore, but I've got my, my tea. Welcome, everybody. So, um... Let me think. Good news. I have some good news. So um, the good news and maybe scary news is I just saw Madonna in a bathtub. Madonna put a video up where she is naked in a bathtub talking about how Corona is the great equalizer because it doesn't care about how much money you make or how good you are or how bad you are. It's, um, it's the great, great equalizer. So I've seen Madonna naked. Basically, it's how, you know, I started my day. Still recovering uh, from that. Claudia's students are great online. Love them and how they're handling the situa situation. And Claudia, I think a lot of that has to do with you because you are teaching super, super well online. And I salute all of the teachers who are teaching online. For so many people, it was new. And people are just getting on with it. And it's just, it's so great. It makes my heart so happy. And this morning I was running in the park and I live <clears throat> near a really big park with a, you know, a big um, path through this park around this beautiful lake. And every few meters, someone wrote in sidewalk choke, uh, chalk, um, stay strong, we're all in this together, think of a positive thought. So as I did this lap around this park, after every few minutes, um, there was like another positive pop-up. And I've lived on this park for many, many years. No one has ever written positive messages like that. So, you know, it's bringing people together in beautiful and new and special ways. Um, and let's try to hold on to that. And let's try to not obsessively refresh the news every five minutes because um, you're overloaded with so much information you can do nothing about. You're bringing stuff into your life. What can you, how do you process that? How can you deal with that? You can't. So really in self-care, in the, in the theme of self-care and being good to yourself, please only let into your life what you know you can handle. If you can't handle it, don't bring it in. It's like you're opening the door to your precious sanctuary, your home, and you're like, hello, monsters, come on in. And then you're like, oh, my God, there's monsters in my house. What am I, what am I going to do? Um, so I think, you know, guard your door to your soul. Be very protective of what you let into your life. There's a lot coming in. That we can't handle. I know from personal experience, I can't handle a lot of the stuff that is being thrown at me. So we have to really be very careful about what we, or what we allow. Okay. And, oh, Leah says, drink ginger tea with cinnamon. Yes, I, 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 I was, and I ran out of ginger. I'll get some more. Thank you for the, thank you for the tips. Okay. Um, I want to talk today in lockdown lesson number five. No, number six es numero seis, no es numero cinco, lo siento. Um, number six, um, about mistakes you are making when you write emails. Because you're making those mistakes. You, 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 I'm talking to you. Um, the problem with emails is you send out your email. Maybe it's got a mistake in it, 
But when people write you back, they will never say to you, oh, by the way, you had a mistake in your, um, in your uh, email. And that's why I'm here, because there's no shame in my game to let you know how to avoid very typical mistakes that people make, especially from the Netherlands when they write emails. One of them is, I look forward to meet you. I look forward to hear from you. I look forward to see you. No, people, we got to stop that right away. It's, I look forward to meeting you. You need the ing there. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing you. Let me tell you why. After certain prepositions, in Dutch, those are four zetsels, many times we take the ing form of the verb. These are called prepositional objects. It's super sexy. I know this is like super sexy grammar talk, right? Prepositional objects, yo, let's get it up. Okay. So after I look forward to, you've got two. Two is the preposition. After the preposition, you have to have the ing. So I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to working with you in the future. I look forward to seeing you when all this stuff has passed, this corona stuff. I will give you other examples that will make more sense in your head. For example, I'm interested in, in is another preposition, I'm interested in learning French. Nobody says I'm interested in learn French. That should sound weird in your head. If it sounds good in your head, you need to find more friends, like better friends who speak better English, for reals, okay? So when you say I'm interested in, always the ing form, in is a preposition. So I'm interested in learning French. We're fascinated by, by is a preposition, we are fascinated by watching the stars at night. If you say, I'm fascinated by watch the stars, that should sound cray cray. So don't do that. Another one, I'm frightened of, of is a preposition, I'm frightened of going out at night. You don't say, I'm frightened of go out at night. That's not right. So this same thing, I'm looking forward or I look forward to meeting you, to seeing you, to reading your report. You need the ing after the two. Now let's move it up a little. Oh wait, you guys are backwards. Let's move it up. Is this your up, like to the front of the sentence? For me, this is the end of the sentence. I don't know if you see me backwards or not. But people ask me all the time, when you're writing an email, you know, when do you say, I'm looking forward to? And when do you say, I look forward to? The good news is both are correct. So you can choose at the end of an email or in another situation when you're speaking, I look forward to or I'm looking forward to. Both, both are okay. The difference is only a difference in style and tone. So if you say, um, I look forward, it's slightly more formal. And I'm looking forward is slightly more informal. That's a general rule. So some people say that I look forward is more polite. So for example, the first time you mail somebody or a prospective client, I look forward is a little bit more polite, more formal, a little bit more distance. And I'm looking forward because it sounds a little more personal. People interpret that as being a little more informal. So it's up to you. I look forward to, or I'm looking forward to, both are good. I look forward to, slightly more formal. I'm looking forward to, slightly more informal. Both are good. We love them both. However, after the two, you need the ing. Always. Yes, always. You're going to send me a message like, always, and I'm going to say right now, yes, always. Of course, you can say, I look forward to meet you, but that's wrong. So if you want to speak and write correctly after looking forward to, or I look forward to, 
You need that ing. Because remember in your, in your mind, I'm interested in learning French. Not I'm interested in learn French. That's cray cray. I'm fascinated by watching the stars at night. Not I'm fascinated by watch. By watch. That sounds like Baywatch if you're from Australia. By watch. By watch. Oh, I made a joke. Um, I'm afraid of going out at night. Not I'm afraid of go. Okay. Also, lots of examples. She's concerned about hearing the news. Not concerned about hear. So you need to think of those prepositions. To, of, for, by, about, etc. After those, many times you take that ing form. And that's a prepositional object. That is our first part of our lesson today. So, who has questions? Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Hendrika. Yeah, Ezelsbruggetje. How do you say Ezelsbruggetje in English? You don't. We do not have a donkey bridge. Ik vind dat heel leuk in het Nederlands. We don't have that in English. What we have is a mnemonic device. M-N, mnemonic device. So, such a weird word. Um, you can just say, it'll help you remember something or a shortcut to remembering something. But I really like Donkey Bridge. Thank you so much for joining. Who has another question? Okay. Thanks. Oh, people are waving. I'm waving back. Do I press a button to wave? Again, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and, and people who want to join my video, don't try. I will never let you in. This is not about you, babes. This is all about me for now, for half an hour a day in your life. Thank you for letting me in. But I, I, uh, you can wave and I'll wave back. But um, that's, um, that's not happening. All right. Part two of writing emails. When you, when you write an, a mail, um, you need to know a couple things. You need to know a lot of things. And this is when you are writing a woman. I need you to know, and Instagram, I'm going to turn you around because you're going to see this backwards. I'm writing this down. Okay. So Insta, I, I hope this works. I'm going to flip this. I'm going to flip the... And I'm going to turn this. Can you see me? Okay, I hope this works. Okay. If you are watching on Insta and Facebook, can you send me a message on Facebook if, this, if you can see this? I hope I've done it right. Let me just, let me just check. I'm flipping it. Facebook, I'm flipping the Insta. Was it okay? Insta? I'm turning around. Well, whatever. All right. This is what I want you to watch out for, is the difference between Ms., Miss, and Mrs. So first of all, let's work on the pronunciation. Ms., Ms. is what I call a heavy S sound, almost leaning towards a Z or a Z sound. Ms., repeat after me. Ms., sounds great. Miss, Miss, and Mrs. Mrs. Ms, Miss, and Mrs. All right. These are all when you are addressing a woman or someone who identifies as a woman. And what's the difference? There is a big difference. A lot of people don't know it. Okay. Thanks, Ramsey. I'm glad you can see it. All right. So when we use this one, Ms., this is used for women or people who identify as women who are married and have kept their own name, living together, divorced, gay, bisexual, single, a widow, or you don't know, or any of the above. It's, it's, it's for all women, <laughs> except for two situations. So when in doubt, you're going to use Ms., Miss is usually used for girls 18 and younger. Miss, like mejuffrouw in English, uh, in Dutch. It's very, um, you'll see it like 
for example, on an envelope for an invitation to a fancy wedding. It'll be in calligraphy or a place card at a dinner. Miss Barbara Johnson. Nice, Barbara. So when, when you're like a young lady, this is how you will be referred to. This one is used for women who are married and they have taken their partner's last name. So if you are married and you have taken your partner's last name, male or female, for your partner, you are then a Mrs. because you have changed your name. So sometimes I get mail addressed to Mrs. Duberman. That's my mom. That's not me. I'm Ms. Duberman. So what's the difference? She was Miss uh, Buckles and got married to Mr. Duberman. So she has changed her name to Mrs. Duberman because she married Mr. Duberman, my dad. And I'm Ms. Duberman because I got married, but I, I didn't change my name. I kept my name. And that name that you have before you get married is called your maiden name. Your maiden name. I'll write that down. No awkward silences. Just give me a second. I got to write this down. So, Ms. is if you are married and you have kept your maiden name. Your maiden name is the name you had, you were born with, your last name before you got married. So, I hope that helps just to reiterate. Fantastic word. Good for Scrabble. Reiterate. Ms. is for every woman or every person who identifies as a woman in the world, except for two situations. Miss, under 18. Mrs. married and has taken her partner's name. That's it. I hope that helped. Instagram, I'm turning you around. Welcome back, Instagram. Thanks for not hanging up. You guys are still there. All right. Question time. Who has questions? I got more to teach, but we'll just do a quick question round now. Who has questions? Oh, people are so nice. Thank you. So great. Where are you from? I am from the United States, born in Brooklyn. You can take the girl out of New York. You can never take New York out of the girl. Yes. Sylvia says, I will go with Ms. just to be sure. I think that's great advice. Go, when in doubt, go with Ms. You cannot go wrong. But if you say Mrs. to someone who isn't a Mrs., you might get in trouble. Question, are you ticklish? And if so, where? Cheers to that question. Am I ticklish? I am. I, 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 I am. But where? I, I um. I think under my arms um, and under oh, my feet, at the bottoms of my feet. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Hi from Chile. Hola, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, proverbs and sayings. Let's do that tomorrow. I could do a whole lesson on that. So proverbs and sayings, um, you're giving me homework. Look, you're giving the teacher homework now. Proverbs and sayings coming tomorrow. Okay. Rule asks, if you're not sure, is it safest to use Ms. Rule? Yes, absolutely. When in doubt, go with the Ms. Have you ever been to Malta? No, I have not. I'm ready to be invited when we're all ready to travel. I would love to, to go there. Ah, Ms., I look forward to seeing you. Yay! That's it. You're applying it already. Thank you so much. That's so great. Okay. And there's more. How do you end an email? So some people end an email. Um, if you're in the Netherlands, I see people ending emails with greetings or greets. Don't, don't be that guy, babes. Don't do it. Um, <clears throat> when you end an email, if you're Dutch, 
you know you have groetjes. Groetjes is okay in the Netherlands, I guess. But the English translation of that is indeed greetings. But, you know, shock and awe, English people do not speak Dutch. English people do not know that there's a Dutch meaning behind this word that makes sense in the kingdom of the Netherlands does not make sense anywhere else. I'm here to tell you straight, does not make sense. So when you end an email with greetings, how do we use greetings in English? One, season's greetings, which means Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holiday Season. You will see greetings on, on holiday cards, like a picture of Santa with season's, season's greetings. That's the only time you will see greetings is on a holiday card. You will never see it at the end of an email. That's cray cray. When I say cray cray, that means crazy times two, really crazy. The second way we would use this is if you're an alien and you're in a spaceship and you land on planet Earth, you would do this, maybe. I'm not an alien, but I do have special skills. You would say, greetings, Earthlings. Take me, take me to your leader. And um, if you're an alien, you know, go with that. But as far as I know, none of you are aliens. We're maybe late waiting for the latest test results to come back, but I don't think anyone here is an alien. So there's lots of ways you can end an email. You can end an email with best regards, kind regards, warm regards. If you know them and you like them, warm regards is a good one. Kind regards is always good. Best regards, always good or best, comma. Those are all good for professional English. Greetings, Earthling. We are now taking over the radio. Greetings, hello. Greetings, and I'm a little baby alien. Um, so let me just put them on my magic whiteboard. And then on Instagram, I'm gonna flip you. I'm so glad I learned how to flip you guys around so that you can see the beauty of my horrible handwriting. Best, kind, regards, um, warm, regards, best, regards, You'll see sometimes in the UK, they'll, end, they'll sign off with yours, which sounds very romantic, but it is used a lot in British English. Turning on, turning you around. Here we go. Check it out. Best, kind regards, warm regards, best regards, or in the UK, yours. Those are all different ways of ending an email. Okay, turning you back. Okay. All right, my darlings, who has questions for me? And what else would you like to know about for future lockdown lessons? How else can I, can I help you? Oh, Brian just joined from Seattle, I think. Welcome, great to see you. Um, who has questions and who has requests? This is English on demand. Hi, I'm waving to you. I don't know how to press those buttons. Can you give us some expressions such as, for example, once in a blue moon or it's raining cats and dogs? Those are really fun and I would like to learn more of them. So great idea, cat, Carolyn. I have um, here my book and I have lots of... Um, expressions in the back of 100 ways to save your ass in English, I have 100 different expressions organized in categories. So what I can do tomorrow is I will choose a category and I will teach you maybe 10 new expressions and I will have them all prepared and written out so that we can learn expressions about marketing and about sales and about money and about success, and about time management, and sports, and animals, and location. Oh, there's so much to learn together. So um, 
that is on the schedule for tomorrow. Um, who else has questions or requests? Oh, I totally forgot to scroll down on Facebook. I am so sorry. Um, am I an alien? No, I am not. I do dress like one occasionally, but no, I am I am not. And there's no dot after Ms. and Mrs. Good question, Rule. Sometimes we do use um, um, a full stop or a period after Mr. or Mrs. But as lately, you will also see it without. Um, however, in, for example, a contract, in a legal document, there's always a, a dot after Mr. and Mrs. because it's, it's official to do it that way. Also, for a contract or a legal document, uh, all, all numbers are written out in full, as they are in many languages. So you won't see numbers as a number. You'll see them written out in full. Thank you so much for asking. Um, who else has a question or a request? All right. So um, I, I hope you have um, found this helpful. I try to keep the lessons to just half an hour or less because I really would just like to take small steps. I think we will be here for a while together. I am here every day, Monday through Friday at 4.30 Dutch time to help um, put a smile on your face and a wrinkle in your brain so that you can learn something new. And if you have any ideas, please send me a DM or um, a message on, on Facebook. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So to recap, that is a good word, recap, which is short for recapitulate, which means to, to make a summary of what we've done. The things, two major points for today, one is you will know the difference between Ms., Mrs., and Miss, Ms., everybody. Mrs. married with her partner's name. And what was the name of the name she had before she got married? That was her maiden name. And Miss is a woman on your, um, a woman under 20, a woman under 18. Can you please share a countdown on your story for live? I didn't even know I could do that. A countdown on my story. Yes, for sure. As soon as I figure out how, I'll do that. A countdown on my story. That's a good idea. Giving me more homework. I love it. Give the teacher homework. Countdown on story. And the second thing we learned was how to end an email with things like best, best regards, kind regards, or warm regards, if you're feeling warm about this person. Okay, my darling. Um, thank you so much. Oh, there's more. I have to see what's happening over here. Thank you so much. Misha, you be safe too. All of you be safe. Wash your hands. Stay inside. There is There are very, very few reasons to... Um, leave your house. You know, if you leave your house, it better be for a super, super good reason because you're putting me at risk and everybody else if you're not following the guidelines. In the Netherlands, we have another emergency um, press conference tonight. So I'm very curious if they will announce um, a lockdown. What do you guys think? Do you think lockdown is coming? Or are we going to do the German model where gatherings are limited to two people or less? So you can have a gathering alone or you can have a gathering with one more person as long as you are six feet apart. And just don't forget with, you know, in English, you are never alone because you always have me, myself, and I. So you're already, there's three of you already. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so on that note, I just want to wish you all well and be safe. And I will see you tomorrow at 4.30, where we will do some fun expressions in English. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to save this video. I'm going to put it, oh yeah, on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I know, I forgot, I forgot that too. On my YouTube channel, I have a lockdown lesson video playlist. Then you can... Um, you can watch all of the lessons on a video playlist on my channel, which is under my name, Buffy B-U-F-F-I Duberman, on YouTube. So if you've missed a lesson, you can check it there. And I hopefully will be able to add this one as well. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you again tomorrow for lockdown lesson number seven.
Bye. Okay. Oh, bye.